Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a quick one. This is, um, uh, this is getting recorded as you can see, uh, hopefully 11.33, Sunday, April 20th. So basically Monday in 33 minutes. But uh, I'll be uploading, uploading this on Monday, record on Sunday. The title, you may be alarmed by the title. It's going to be called Historic Potential Rainfall Record Breaking. Someone can along those lines. You, you might be thinking, what's up with this kid, you know, saying everything's historic record breaking. Well, it's just a series of events. Um, we've had two, in Chicago, we've had the latest ever biggest snowfall, snowfall that's ever occurred here. Two and a half inches, almost three inches, which wasn't quite as much as you expected, but still record breaking. So, you know, it proved right. And now we're going to be seeing insane amounts of rain, which will put the month at, at an end of record. So, yes, you know, this may seem a little bit redundant, but there definitely is a reason to call this historic because this pattern is just so wet and so stormy, it's, it has to be called upon. And so, you know, bear with me. I know uh, and we may be ne needing to use the word historic more and more often because a lot of these records are getting broken, either cold, hot, warm, snowy, cold. Um, it's just becoming more of a drastic um, period. So, um, and yeah, that's all. I just wanted to say that quickly. A little disclaimer. Uh, if you want to subscribe, you could do so. Click the sub subscribe button. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my new gardening channel, I have a gardening channel link in the description box below called Great Lakes Gardener. Let's get into this. So, uh, right now we're looking at, okay, so the first system that produces snow is out here in the ocean, not really doing much. We have a second system that came on the coast couple days ago after this system did um which was kind of like an alberta clipper this one will have a lot more rain it'll have a lot more stuff to work with a lot more moisture a lot more availability it'll be just warmer there won't be cold air from canada invading it you know kind of preventing it from really ramping up there will be a second system you can see it i could tell it's a second system not connected directly with this system is because look there's a closed low right there there's a circle right there it isn't really strong enough for the models to Put a red L right there, sorry, a red L, but uh, it's definitely there and it's producing some snow across North Dakota, some snow across Minnesota, there's some winter storm warnings with winter weather advisories posted, but this is what's interesting us um, mainly because this is more dangerous, I would say. There's some severe thunderstorms, even some tornado warnings right now in Kansas, central Kansas, it's, you know, definitely concerning and it will continue at least the Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll see an everyday risk of severe weather. Um, slightly at different locations, but the rain also will be very heavy, and you can see it moves um, into Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan as the day goes on. This is t Monday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I think the GFS is a little bit slow with this. I think it'll end by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but that passes through leaves quite a bit of rain behind let's look at the total rain total accumulated precipitation you could see um definitely quite a bit across missouri and I um, iowa illinois tapering off as we go further towards the east but um wherever if you're in the area i would say in kansas missouri nebraska if you see one thunderstorm it could drop as much as two inches at once in 30 minutes so uh definitely some higher localized amounts are expected then we see a second system already on tuesday the very next day maybe a little bit later on in the day this one seems to be much 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 bigger and you can see uh definitely a load and loads of heavy rain yet again for uh the similar areas just a little bit further to the north and more widespread and we see another snow side with this and this would produce much more snow if it was colder and not may 2nd um but this would be a classic winter storm and then look you think all, all is done but then we have another system kind of developing off the uh the moisture that was left behind the second system a third one develops and it really taps into that moisture and it doesn't develop you know too strong but it doesn't have to be a strong load to produce thunderstorms all you need is a slight disturbance in the atmosphere something to kind of give it a spark and it could be a chain reaction of thunderstorms severe thunderstorms definitely a possibility so uh you know that passes through and then we're looking at friday may 3rd which is going to be this week and we see Okay, we see another system. Uh, it looks like two systems, kind of. One to the north right here, maybe a little bit of snow across Minnesota, a little bit of rain. And a second system across the southeast, which looks to um, go on to produce quite a bit of rain for the northeast. And we see another system, uh, another system. So just a very active period with um, some warm temperatures, especially the further south you go. But let me to show you the total accumulated precipitation through 228 hours, which is what the new model run is showing through. Total accumulated, look at that, quite a bit of precip. And again, with thunderstorms, if you get a couple of um, localized thunderstorms coming over the same area over and over again, I would not be surprised 
<clears throat> to see 9, 10, 11 inch amounts of, of rain, while uh, most areas will still end up seeing anywhere from 3 to 5 inches of snow, of, of rain across Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, getting into the Texas area as well. Let's uh, go back to the previous model run. Let's see what happens through 384 hours. Um, you can see that the pattern seems to continue, especially across the south. The focus maybe at the beginning was across the across the south with um, across the south across the north with the heavy rain somewhere on an axis like this, and now it has shifted to more over here in the southern states: Louisiana, Texas, uh, Arkansas, Southern Oklahoma, um, over here. But uh, that's still up for the jury exactly where the heaviest rainfall <coughs> will fall. Uh, let's go to thermodynamics. Look at two meter temperature anomalies. This basically gives us a very good idea of what will be above or below above or below average in terms of temperature at what given time. So right now <coughs> we're looking at uh, Sunday, April 28th. So pretty chilly across much of the country, but warm in the southwest and southeast. And these storms, these constant storms, will bring quite a bit of rain and quite a bit of warmth to the southeast, anywhere east of that. But behind it, quite a bit of cold air because these systems still are uh, late enough or early enough in the season, I would say, where they, they're still, you know, possible, potential enough, strong enough to tap in that cold air and bring it in behind. And it seems like a below average conditions will prevail for a lot of the north. This west um, will warm up quickly. We'll stay a little bit below average for a couple of days, but warm up. The southeast will stay warm. And then we see the pattern kind of breaking, but mainly the north stays pretty cold, guys. It does not look to be too awfully warm. Um, we see a below average conditions. I would say the first half of May at this point is looking fairly below average in terms of temperatures. And uh, we, you know, we're not we're not looking at 40s and 50s. We're obviously going to be warmer because the averages are all around 70 at most points. It's just that it still will be chillier compared to an average May. So you can see during the week here, warm across the south, maybe getting a little bit towards the north warmer. But generally, the northern parts of the states, especially the Midwest, will be fairly chilly. I mean, you can see some days. Um, this will be the warmest part of the day Saturday, um, not looking too warm. And then, uh, so this is Sunday, I, I obviously a little bit warmer, uh, you know, Monday looking fairly chilly, 54, 50s, that's actually very chilly for May. At this point, the average for many of these locations is in the 60s and 70s, and we're looking fairly chilly. You could see another day of 50 degree temperatures, not warm at all. We see, a, you could see down to 37, 39, May 8th. So, it looks fairly chilly, at least, uh, to say the least. Uh, the Cal Florida, Peninsula of Florida, look at, look at that, 90s. So the southeast will be almost like a completely different climate over there. It will be very warm with these thunder with these big storms producing all this rain and all this warm air. But, you know, obviously towards the end of the forecasting period, we get warmer. But that's not to say that we're going to be below average because the averages go up. So think about it logically. If you have, you're going from a 40 degree high and you're 10 degrees below average, you're going to be at 30. If you have a 70 degree high and you're 10 degrees below average, you're going to be at 60. Yeah, that's warm, but it's still below average. So I wanted to show you the National Weather Service, what's going on. As you can see right here, those colors, hopefully you can see it's basically in central Kansas. Severe thunderstorm watches and warnings have been posted. I don't think there are any winter storm, uh, sorry, you know, tornado warnings yet. And I think there have been though some. So uh, you, you can see just some fairly, uh, potent severe thunderstorm to say the very least and you know this radar may look a lot more aggressive than it actually is but uh, these are just radar uh, you know kind of like refractions they just reflect the, it could be anything could be bugs could be mist could be fog but uh, the, heavy, the actual precip is just this in the, in the darkest colors so some a cluster of here of some storms we have a cluster of rainfall across Illinois and Iowa moving towards the northeast that will be producing quite a bit of uh, rain as we go on into the future and then look at the CPC uh, we are looking at a slight risk every day but that's not to say that one of these may go up to an enhanced I don't think we'll see a moderate but enhanced will, is fairly likely and uh, I also wanted to show you the National Weather Service's predicted rainfall outlook for the next uh, seven days look at that those are ridiculously high amounts and it's not to say that the other parts of the United States won't see any rain. They'll still be seeing quite a bit of rain. It's just it's focused on the Midwest. All right, so the video will pause and, and cut awkwardly in a couple of seconds. 
and now I think we're back. So uh, that's again what happens every time I go over 10 minutes. But uh, you can see it's centered over the Midwest. These red colors, that is three, four inches and above. So that, you know, it goes to show you that's quite a darn bit of a lot of rain, especially for the next seven days. And uh, the rest of the country doesn't see too awfully, you know, um, great amounts of rain between one and uh, one and a half. The green areas is uh, below a half an inch. And then here you can see Georgia, Alabama not seeing too much. And the West staying fairly dry. But the Midwest will get absolutely hammered by this heavy rain. So that is basically it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll catch you all, guys, in the next episode. See ya.